Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I was working on a little um, Reader's Digest journal this morning and I'm doing a chain stitch binding and I remembered that I had a question um, from a viewer in one of my videos about the chain stitch binding. So I thought I would do a little tutorial on how I do mine. Um, I thought I'd show you a couple. This is what it looks like. This is a great example because it's um, so the, the threads are pretty thin, but this one is one, this is a journal I made uh, probably in 2015, um, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven signatures, um, and they're, they're bound with a chain stitch. And then this, incidentally, is also a um, Reader's Digest journal. And the chain stitch that you use in book binding is the same stitch that you use in embroidery. So this is one of my big glue books and it's also a chain stitch. So the thing you have to have with the chain stitch binding when you start out is uh, you have to have an anchor stitch. Um, just like you do if you're doing embroidery, how you have to have somewhere to start being able to loop your um, loop your thread through. So. There's another chain stitch and each signature is bound individually. Uh, they're not connected on the inside of the book, but I thought I'd give you a little, thought I'd show you how I do my, um, how I do mine. So here's the little book I was working on and I put the first signature in and you can see there's my anchor stitching up at the top. So when you punch, your holes for a chain stitch binding. You need to have two holes. I usually do them at the top because if you did them at the bottom, then when your book is standing upright, your your chain stitches would go down like this between one another. But, and I personally like mine to go up like this. So that's why I always put my anchor start with my anchor stitches at the top. So those, it, the anchor stitch is two holes that need to be fairly close together. Um, and we'll, you'll see why in just a second. And then for the actual um, hole pattern, you can put any number of holes you want, any kind of spacing. It doesn't even have to be even. It could be totally uneven spacing. It could be any number, um, any hole pattern, you know, of course, as long as they're just all lined up. So that's kind of something to remember as we go through this. I'm going to bind with this. This is some cotton that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I am going to wax it. I don't always wax all the thread I use. Uh, this one I am going to because I like... I like waxing it for a chain stitch. Um, because it gives it a little more grab. It it um, it grips a little better, so it makes it easier to um, to get the stitching tight. So you really only need about I don't know. I mean, to be safe, I would say three times the binding. Um, I'm going to, actually, that's probably enough for both. So I'll just clip that. And thread that up. So here's the template that I made to punch these holes. Um, and so it basically is like this and I have three signatures. So I divided this out and then I punched my, I actually punched them from the inside. Um, I punched my holes here. So then I want to punch my signatures as I go. So I'm going to find the center of my signature and then I always go through because if I have pages that aren't the same height, um, such as this one, 
you'd have to decide whether you want it just you know justified to the bottom of the page or justified up to the top I personally like them centered so if I have pages you know like this that I could put all the way up to the top or all the way down to the bottom I kind of I like them sent to kind of center them so when I get my signature ready I make sure that make sure that all my pages are basically centered and then the next step is I'm going to take the center folio out of the signature and I'm going to fold it in half wrong side out okay and then from there I'm going to mark my holes for punching um, so here's the center signature uh, punching. So I'm going to line this up as you know centered as I can with that line of um, that line of stitch holes, those holes that I punched. And I'm going to mark I'm going to mark these holes. I don't need the second hole for the anchor stitching. I only need the top one. So I'm just going to go through and mark my holes here. And then turn this back right side out. Put it together. This is my second signature. I'll clip these to hold them in place. And then I'm going to punch, punch these, something to punch and cradle this. So I'm going to punch these holes. And you only, with a chain stitch, you, you have to go back through each hole one time. So as opposed to a pamphlet stitch, which we're, which we're kind of all used to, when you start this chain stitch, you actually start um, on the book itself. So I'm going to start in the bottom anchor hole. I'm starting in this hole right here and I'm going to go into that hole from the inside of the book and notice I haven't started sewing my signature in yet. Right now I'm just going to create this uh, anchor stitch that I need to start my binding. And to make it a little stronger, I'm going to go back through so I have a double over. Try to do it so you can see it. So I have this doubled over. So once I've got this in, I'm going to pull it as tight as I can without breaking it, and I'm going to tie it off in a square knot. And this is where it comes in handy that your um, your thread is waxed because you do want that to be as tight as possible without breaking it. And then I'm just going to trim that. And that I'll I leave that. I like leaving a tail when I do a binding because I feel like it gives it something to you know to grip onto. So here's how you start. There's how you start it. So I have those two. I crossed them over. I have those two stitches um, right there at the top. And of course that's going to bug me. See how I crossed over from one side to the other? Okay, well. So then we're going to start sewing in our signature. So. I'm going to start at the top hole and I'm going to go in from the outside 
through the top hole. And I'm going to come down to the next hole that I marked, which is here, which is, so I'm, I'm starting here. I went in here and I'm going to come in. I'm going to go to the outside of the book through this, this hole. And then once I get my thread to the outside, now pull that tight and then I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to take my thread and go underneath this top anchor stitch. And I'm going to pull that tight, pull it tight that way. And then we're going to go back through the same, the same hole that we just came out of just like that. I'm trying to make sure I don't pierce that other thread. Okay, so then we're gonna go down to the next hole in through there. And then out to the back of the book. I tied a little knot. And pull that tight. Go underneath the stitch you just made above it. Oops. And then pull that tight. And go back down through that same hole you just came out of. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to voice over the other part of this because my dog started barking uncontrollably. Basically what happened here was I was going through and when I came back through the hole, I pierced through the uh, thread that was already going through the hole. So I just unthreaded my needle and pulled it back out um, so that I could tighten it all the way down and then I'm re-threading my needle and uh, keep going after that. So you just continue going down, down the crease um, from hole to hole. So you go in from the inside through the signature, out through the spine, and then you take the thread up to the loop in the chain that you just made previously. And you're gonna loop through that and go back down through the same hole that you just came out of. And you can see there, I'm kind of trying to angle my needle downward to make sure that I don't pierce through the thread again. And I do um, tug this pretty tight. Just be careful that you don't snap your threads when you're doing that. I find there's such a fine line between pulling it really snug and then it just, you know, you, you, it shows no signs of snapping and then all of a sudden just, dink, it pops. But I think a lot of the time it's because... Um, you've pierced back through it. But what I'm doing here, I'm almost down to the bottom, so I'm just going back in. And then down into that last hole. I guess I had a little trouble getting it through. And then I'm going to create my last chain. On the outside. 
I'm just making sure that they're all snug and tight, that I don't need to tighten anything up before I tie it off. So I'm going to go back through to the inside and then I tie a knot on the inside. I think this is, it's called a half, I think it's a half hitch knot, but I'm going to go through, loop through twice and pull that taut, but not, you know, not tight enough to snap. So then because the thread on the top hole is hidden on the, the outside of the signature, I'm going to take this thread end and go back through the hole I just came out of after I've tied my half hitch knot and I'm going to hide that thread tail basically between the signature and the spine. So I'm just putting my needle back through that hole and then pulling it out. So you will be able to see it between the signatures, uh, but you won't be able to see it on the inside of the signature. So once I stitch a signature in, I, I go through and crease each page. Because I sew them pretty tight, I like to have them pretty, pretty tight. So um, this just gives it a chance to lay flatter. It just lays a lot better. So I'll go through and do the entire thing, do the whole signature, flatten everything out. There we go. And then let's move on to the next one. So I already have this thread waxed. I'm just gonna thread up my needle. And this is just a regular book binding needle. that. So I've got my last signature, which is actually the first signature, and I already punched the holes in my binding, so I need to match the holes um, to punch in the signature. So I'm going to line that center spread, that center sheet of the signature folded wrong side out. Um, and I'm going to line it up to the holes that I've already punched in my in my spine where I want it to go. And I don't need that second hole. Um, I only need that two anchor stitch holes on the outside of the book, not on the inside. So you can see how I, I've just kind of lined, I made little marker marks and you can use pencil or something. I want to just make sure you could see it um, so that you can see where you're going to punch your signature. So once you've done that, you can fold it back the way you had it and put it inside the signature, in the center of the signature. And I'm just going through here and making sure that all my pages are um, at the height that I want them. And then I'm going to clip it together and punch the holes for this signature. So remember with this one, we're going to start sewing on just the book cover. Um, we're not attaching the signature yet. And I'm going to go in from the inside of the book. I'm going to go to the outside of the book through the second hole, which is the bottom anchor hole. And then I'm going to go back through both of those until both my threads are on the inside. 
and that's to give it a to create a strong stitch to put your, uh, your your chain loops through. So I'm just going to pull that tight and then tie this off in a square knot. And cut it leaving just a, a little bit of a tail so that if it does start to work itself loose uh, you can hopefully catch it and pull it tight again and if the thread is if it's cut too close to the knot and it starts to work itself loose it's just gonna come right out so I went in the signature from the outside to the middle and then I'm going to go down to that what's the third hole in the spine and then loop my thread back through that anchor stitch at the top pull it so that it's nice and secure and then go back into the book and into the signature through the same hole that I just came out of. And you just keep doing that all the way down, making sure that you keep it nice and tight as you go. I think with this chain stitch, it's definitely a lot easier to tighten it up as you go. If you get down to the bottom and you realize that um, that you've got something that's part of it that's kind of loose it's a little harder to tighten it up so you can see how each time I each time I take a stitch I actually kind of give it a little tug and make sure it's nice and snug before I move on to the next stitch I like the way this looks on the inside because on the inside, the center spread of the, the signature, it's just straight stitches all the way down. Oh, I think here I was talking about um, the, the book itself, that this book is a little atypical for me. Um, I made it because I really like that cover that uh, that Reader's Digest cover, but for some reason that cover was just wanting more muted colors with it. So I put it together with these more muted tones, and I think it turned out really pretty. Um, but it's it's not it's not as much my style as as the journals that I use for myself. The colors are. Um, a little more muted and the pages inside are all um, either naturally yellowed or coffee dyed so it's a pretty book it's just I'll probably put it in my Etsy shop because it's um the colors are just a little more subtle than I like personally so there I do that half hitch knot and I pull it tight and then I'm going to take my thread tail and go back through the hole and bring my needle out between the signature and the book spine. And like I said, you will be able to see the thread between the signatures, but that doesn't bother me because it's a hand bound book. So. So here I'm doing the same thing I did before, going through and smoothing out the pages, creasing them so everything lies nicely. I think I used some cookbook pages from the 50s and then there's some quilting pages, some quilting book pages, um, some things from a wildflower book. There may be another gardening book in there also. some pages from um, a wine tasting book that I have. I 
think there's some music pages in there. So here I'm telling you about the, um, the designs. So that first page is actually a decoupage napkin. And once I did that, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be pretty if I went through and put flowers all through the book? So I started going through the first signature and doing little watercolor. And I was using my travel paintbrush and I was going very quickly. So they're really rough little watercolor sketches of flowers that I did um, in the first signature. And then I decided, well, that might be too much to try to accomplish. Plus, I don't know how much of it would eventually all get covered up. So I abandoned that. But I think if I do put it in my Etsy shop, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some more watercolors in it. But I won't do them with the travel brush. I'll do them with a real brush. So the next thing I need to do on this book is put the new end paper in. So I just chose some paper. I already had it cut. I cut the, the front and the back end papers at the same time. And I'm just going to load it up with glue. And then get it placed nicely. Sorry, I got my head in the And then this is a Teflon bone folder, so it's kind of, it's a non-stick, so it won't, <laughs> and you can see that my hands are all sticky, so I had to get something and clean the, clean the glue off my fingers. But I like to, to um, kind of burnish that whole end paper down with um, that bone folder, and then make sure I get the edges really good. So here, which I don't think you could hear it exactly because of the dog, um, that sound, I, I was showing you the sound that the spine has this kind of crinkly sound, and I don't remember, but I think that I put some, a, a piece of Tyvek inside that, I reinforced it with some Tyvek. So when you open and close the cover, you can kind of hear the, the crinkling of the Tyvek. But there's the finished chain stitch, and I hope you enjoyed this if it was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, I'm, I'll actually probably make another video of um, working on some painting in this, in this little journal before I put it in my Etsy shop. So take care, you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.